In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create the perfect photography portfolio website. Starting a website can be kind of scary, especially if you don't have a lot of technical knowledge. But don't sweat it. We've helped thousands of people create their own websites online using WordPress. So, we put together the most comprehensive step-by-step -step guide to help you get started on creating your website right away. You should follow this tutorial all the way to the end because I'm going to show you everything you need in order to create and manage a successful photography portfolio website. I'm going to show you how to do things like purchase a domain name and a hosting plan, as well as how to install and customize themes, create pages, menus, and so much more. And if you follow this tutorial all the way to the end, you'll end up with a beautiful website that looks something like this. This is the home page. This is the first page that a viewer will see when they open your website. You can see the cookie bar here, which you'll learn to add in this video. You can see the logo updated here, and this will also be taught in this tutorial. Next is the About page. You can use this page to give the customers a little insight about you. Moving next to the Services page, here you can display the services you provide. Everything is customized here. I'll also show you how to add the photo gallery to your WordPress website. Next is the contact page. The contact page here displays all the contact information like your contact number, address, and location. You can see the contact form here, which you'll learn to create in this video. Coming up next, you have the privacy policy page. A privacy policy page is a document required by law that discloses the information you collect about visitors on your website. This makes the process of creating a photography portfolio website very easy. So now I'm going to show you how you can create this beautiful photography portfolio website in just a few easy steps. But before we start, we post WordPress-related content regularly, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. So the very first step of creating an online website is to purchase a domain and a hosting plan. So the very first step of creating a website is buying a domain and hosting. The domain is the name of your website, for example, www.yourwebsite.com. And the hosting is what puts your website on the internet. Right now, I'm on the FixRunner website. Here, we will first search for the domain we're looking for to see if it's available or not. I'll link this in the description below. Now, here, enter the name of the domain you want. So, I'll just type onlinefixrunner.com, then click on search. And as you can see, we get a notification that this domain is available, and we can register it. So, now let's move on to step 2, which is to buy hosting and domain. Click here to get hosting and domain, and you'll be redirected to SiteGround. SiteGround, in my opinion, is one of the best hosting providers out there, so we will be using SiteGround to buy our domain and hosting. And now scroll down a bit, and we see SiteGround offers three plans, the Startup, Grow Big, and Go Geek. For beginners, the Startup plan is more than enough. It offers one website, that is, you can use one domain with this plan. It gives 10 gigabytes of web space, 10,000 monthly visits, unmetered traffic, free SSL, and much more. The other plans offer more features, but for beginners, the startup plan is sufficient. So click on Get Plan. And here we have to register a new domain. So here, type in the name of the domain you want. If you want your site to be .in or .org instead of .com, you can select that from here. Then click on Proceed. Now here, first you'll have to enter your account information, which you will then use to log in to SiteGround. Then the client information is your domestic information, like address, name, and phone number. Then finally we have the payment information, 
Enter your card details there. Then here you can review your purchase information. You can review the hosting services. And as you can see, the plan is a startup. If you want to change the plan, you can do so now. Then select the period you want to buy the plan for. Since I'm not going to use this domain much, I'll just choose one month. But I recommend you to choose a longer plan as they'll be cheaper as compared to the short-term plans. You can also change the data center from here. SiteGround also provides some extra services if you want, like domain privacy and an SG site scanner. They're charged additionally outside the domain and hosting plan. Then finally scroll down and click here to confirm the terms and service. And you can enable this as well if you want to receive SiteGround news and special offers by email. Then click on Pay Now. Now SiteGround will first verify your phone number. So you can choose how you want to verify your number. I'll choose the text message option. Then click on Next. Enter the code you received. and then click on Next. And now you have to verify your credit card. SiteGround will perform a small test authorization, so click on Next. And now you have to enter the authorization amount, which you can check for in your bank statement or contact your bank for it. After you've entered the authorization amount, click on Next, and you get redirected to this page. And here it says the order was submitted and your account is now being created. You just have to wait for a few minutes. And now, as you can see, the account was created. Let's now move on to the customer area. Now that we've got the domain and the hosting plan, we're going to install WordPress. This is the home page. Let's start by clicking here on the setup site. Now here select Start a New Website and choose WordPress. Now you have to set up the login details which you will use to access the back end of your site. Here again, SiteGround has an upsell where you can add the SG Site Scanner and Domain Privacy for extra charges. I'll just skip all that and click on Finish. The site is being created. Just wait for a couple minutes. Now let's start managing the site by visiting the site tools. This is the SiteGround dashboard. On the left-hand side, click on WordPress. Then click on Install and Manage. Scroll down to Manage Installation. Here you can see the domain name we purchased. Click here on this icon under Actions. Click on Start Now. And here we have to select a theme for our website. But let's skip this for now and let's log into the back end of our website. So this is our WordPress dashboard. And let's see how the website looks right now. Just click on Visit Site here. And this is our website right now. It has the default theme and no content. After installing WordPress, the first thing we're going to do is install an SSL certificate. Before we start customizing the site, you can see here beside our domain, it says our connection is not secure. This is because we have not installed an SSL certificate on our site. To do that, Let's go back to the SiteGround dashboard. Then click on Security. 
and then click on the SSL Manager. Then click here to select the SSL. Choose the Let's Encrypt Wildcard SSL. This is free with the startup plan. Then click on Get. And once the SSL is installed for our domain, now to finish up this process, we will install a plugin to make sure everything works correctly. So, back in your WordPress dashboard, go to Plugins, then click on Add New. In the search bar, type Really Simple SSL and press Enter. This is the plugin we will be using. It has a very good rating, and it's also compatible with our version of WordPress. So click on Install Now to start the installation. Once the installation is complete, this button will change to activate. Then click on it to activate the plugin as well. Now we are redirected to the plugins page. This is where you can manage all the installed plugins on your site. Now here you have this blue button that says go ahead activate SSL. Click on this button. You'll need to log in back to your dashboard after the SSL is activated. But before that, let's go to the website. And I'll just reload the site. And you can see it says the connection is now secure. So the SSL certificate was installed and activated successfully. Now let's log in back to our website's dashboard. Now that we've got an SSL certificate, we're going to install a theme for our website. This is where we will customize our website. From here we can add posts, add pages, install plugins, etc. These icons are appearing because of some plugins installed on our site. So let's disable them first. Go to Plugins, then click on Installed Plugins. SiteGround automatically adds these three plugins, so I'll just select these three plugins, then click here on Bulk Action, and select Deactivate. Then click on Apply. And if you notice, once these plugins were deactivated, the plugin icons were also removed from our dashboard. Now let's start by installing a theme. But we will not use a simple theme. The theme I'm going to show you lets you import a whole website that you can further customize according to your need. So go to Appearance, then click on a theme, then click here on Add New. Now, here you have a list of themes that you can install. But we will search for a particular theme called Astra. This is the theme. You can click here to preview this theme. As you can see, this theme has a very good rating. So, now click on Install to start the installation. And then, when the button changes to activate, click on it to activate the theme. Now, here you see it says that Astra comes with dozens of ready to use templates. So, to get them, click here to get started. This will install the started templates plugin on your website. Wait for a few seconds while the plugin is installed and activated. Now, you have to select a page builder. The easiest page builder to use is Elementor. So let's select that. Now here you can look through these templates and select the one which you like. There are free options and premium options as well. Since I want to create a photography portfolio website in WordPress, so I'll search for a template that looks more like it. You can also search the same under categories given over here. So you can see Photography under the Professional category. Click on it. You can see various related templates here. You can select any of them. And let's select this template over here. 
Clicking on it, here you can see the preview. This is how your website template is going to appear. Here you can see this page comes with the home page, about page, service page, and contact page. You can even see this button in the header which will redirect you to some page. Now you can add your logo from here. To do so, simply click on Upload File here. You can just select one from the media library or upload one as per your requirement. I'm uploading one from my device here. Once uploaded, click on Select. You can see your website logo has been updated here. Moving further, you can customize the logo width as well using this option here. Once everything is done here, let's click on Continue. Then here, select the colors for your website. You can choose from these palettes here. You can see the preview here. You can change the colors as per your choice. Once done, scrolling a little here, you can change the font for the website from here. You can see the changes in the preview. Once satisfied with the changes, simply click on Continue. You have to fill in some information here, like your name, your work email, etc. Let me fill in all these details here. Once done, click on Submit and build my website button over here. And now your site is being imported. Wait for a few minutes while your site is being imported. Once it's done, click on View Site. And as you can see, a wonderful and professional site has been imported. This makes the process of creating a website a lot easier. You can see the website has been imported successfully. After the theme installation is done, it's now time to customize the theme. Now it's time to customize the theme. You can simply click on this Customize button over here. There is one more way to customize the theme if you don't find the Customize option here. For that, simply move back to the WordPress dashboard. Hover over Appearance and click on Customize. This is where we'll customize the whole theme. You'll be able to see the changes in the preview on the right side here. Any changes here will be made on the global level. That is, any changes you make here will appear on your whole site. Also, these settings might be a little different for you. That's because this depends on the theme you're using. First, let's go to the global setting. Here you have various options. Typography, colors, container, buttons, etc. Let's start with typography. You can change the preset from here. Here you can change the fonts and text on your website. You can configure these settings on your own. Now let's go back and look into the color setting. Here you can change the colors on your site. We already changed the colors on our site, but if you want to change them again, you can choose from the palettes here. Or change the theme color, link color, etc. from here. You can even change surface colors here. Then we have the container settings. Here you can configure the layout of the site, but it's best to leave these settings to default. So now, let's look into the button settings. Here you can change the button's preset. You can see the changes here. And you can also change the text color and background color from here. You can even change the border color. You can even change the button font from here. Once done, move back and let's explore scroll to the top settings. Here you can toggle the switch to enable scroll to top settings. Enabling it will display a few more settings. You can see the icon over here to scroll to the top. You can configure the icon's display settings here. You can even set the position and configure the icon size settings as well. You can also configure block editor settings and make changes as per your requirement here.
You can also configure the MISC settings as well on your own. Here you can enable the smooth scroll to ID. Now let's go all the way back and we'll go to the header builder settings. This is the header of the website and you'll be able to preview the changes here. Here you can set the site title and the logo. We've already added our logo to the site, but it's not displayed here for now, so I'll show you why in a bit. You can also configure the primary menu settings and the button settings that are displayed in the header as well from here. Now click on the site logo and title. Here you can add the logo of your business. I've already added a logo earlier, but in case you want to change the same, you can do it from here. It's not displayed on the site because we need to switch off this toggle switch here. Once done, you can see the logo has been updated here. You can adjust the logo width from here as well. You can also set the site title from here. You can even enable or disable the site title by using this toggle switch here. You can enable or disable the inline logo and site title as well. Then the next is the site tagline. This will appear as your website title as well. Everything can be customized here. You can set the site title visibility on different devices. Various settings are given over here which you can customize on your own. The last setting is the site icon or fave icon. You can set that from here. To add a site icon, click on it. Now click on the select site icon. I'm uploading one from my system. Once done, simply click on select. And you can see the fave icon has been changed here. Let's move back to the primary menu and button settings. You can configure the primary menu settings from here. You can also configure button settings by clicking on it. Here you can change the button text. You can also add a link to this button here. All the settings here are self-explanatory. Then we have the breadcrumb settings which you can configure on your own. Moving back, then we have the blog settings. Here you can configure the blog post structure if you have blog posts on your site. You can choose what you want to display in the post structure and meta settings. And you can also do the same for the single posts. Moving back, now we have page related settings where you can select the container layout as well as the sidebar layout. You can set everything as per your choice. Then we have the sidebar settings. The sidebar is disabled for this theme, but if you want to display it, you can display it from here. You can set the sidebar width also if the sidebar is enabled. Now let's go back and let's look into the footer builder settings. Here you have the footer layout. You can edit all these widgets just by clicking on this icon. So if you want to edit anything, you can click on this icon and then make changes here accordingly. You can simply click on this pen icon here and change the image from here. Let me select one from the media library. You can edit this text over here as well repeating the process. You can see the change in the text here. You can also make changes in the footer menu. You can add pages or custom links here. To configure the settings of the custom link, simply click on it to expand like this. Here you can edit the custom links. This is how you can edit the navigation label. You can even edit the label names in this menu as well.
In case you want to remove any menu item, you can do so like this. Moving back to the site identity settings, we've already discussed these settings earlier in this video. You can configure the menu settings from here. You can see the menu named Navigation here, which is our primary menu. And this is the menu displayed here. You can click on a menu item to edit it. And to add more menu items, click here on the Add Items button. You can add more menu items like pages, posts, landing pages, or custom links from here like this. You can adjust the position of the menu items by using drag and drop functionality like this. To remove a menu item, simply click on it and then click on the remove link here. You can see the changes here in the menu. You can also configure the widget settings from here. Moving back, you can configure the home page settings as well. You can see various related settings here. You can set any page as your home page. Under additional CSS settings, you can add a custom CSS code to customize your website. You can see how your website will look on different devices from here. It's important to make your website look good on all devices because most users use phones. Now, once everything is in place, don't forget to click on Publish to save all the changes we made. It's now time to view the site from the front end. You can see how beautiful the website looks. You can see the primary menu here. This is how easy it is to customize your website. And after customization, we're going to learn how to edit the pages. It's now time to edit the pages and make them look more beautiful. You can see various pages we have that have already been added to the menu here. We will use the Elementor editor to edit the pages on the site because Elementor provides a lot more customization options than the default WordPress editor. We'll edit the home page first. To do so, click here on the edit page. Now simply click on the edit with Elementor button over here. So, as of now, this is how the home page looks. You can change all the text background images on this page over here. For example, to change this text over here, simply click on it. And here you can edit the text like this. Similarly, you can change this text here as well. You can even change the paragraph text here like this. To configure the button settings, you can click on it. Here on the left, you can change the text and customize the button accordingly. You can also change the image in the background by going to the section Settings and moving to the Style tab. From here, you can change the image. Simply click here, and now you can add an image from Media Library, or you can also upload one from the device. I'm uploading multiple images to be used later. Once images are uploaded, select the one you want to add in the background. Now click on Insert Media. You can see the change in the background image here. Scrolling down to another section, you can change the images and the text here as well. 
To edit the text, simply click on it, and now here you can change the text. I'll repeat the process for the other two columns as well. To change the image in the background of the column, simply go to the specific column's settings, and from here you can change the image. Let's select the image from the media library, and once done, click on Insert Media. Let's repeat the process for the other two columns as well. Once done, let's scroll to another section. You can edit the paragraph here as well. Simply click on it, and here you can edit the text. Everything can be customized here. You can change every image and text, customize buttons, etc. Let's change the background image here as well. Similarly, I'll edit the text here as well. You can see the gallery module here as well. You can showcase your very best work in order to attract new clients and develop your business. So let me change these images here. Let me remove all these images from here. And now let's select some images from the media library. Once done, click on Add to Gallery. You can see the images have been added to the gallery here. Once done, you can see how beautiful the website looks now. Don't forget to update the changes. Now, let's use the Finder option and navigate to another page. Let's move to the About page. So you can see this is the About page. To change the image in the section's background, simply go to the section's settings, and under the Style tab, you can find the setting to change image. You can select the image from the media library, or upload one from the device. Once selected, click on Insert Media. You can configure image size as well. You can also set the image position. Now, let's edit the heading here. and everything can be customized. Once done, simply update the changes. Now, let's navigate to another page. I'm moving next to the service page. and you can see this is the service page of our photography website. Let's change the background image of this section over here, and you can configure section settings here.
You can set the image size, position, etc. It's all up to you. You can edit each heading and paragraph text here. Let's change this image as well. Similarly, I'll customize this section also. Once everything is in place, don't forget to update the changes. It's now time to navigate to the contact page using the Finder feature. You can customize this page as well, as per your need. You can see the contact form here, which is embedded using the form shortcode. The form is created using the WP Forms plugin. In case you want to change the form here, you need to move to the WordPress dashboard. Hover over WP Forms and click on All Forms. You can see the form here. This is the form that's embedded in the contact page. You can see the shortcode is the same as that added on the contact page. To change the form, you can simply create a new form. Simply click on Add New, and you can select the form template here. You can see the template comes with various fields already added. To edit any field and configure field settings, simply click on it. On the left, you can edit the field label. You can even add more fields from here. Simply use drag and drop functionality. Clicking on it, you can edit the label. You can even edit the choices like this. You can even toggle the required switch to make the field mandatory. Once done, don't forget to save the form. It's now time to embed the form. You can simply click on Embed and select or create a page to embed the form. You can select from the existing page like this, or you can also embed the form using form shortcode. So, let's move back. You can see this is the form we created. Now, simply copy the form shortcode from here. And once copied, replace the shortcode here. And this is how easy it is. You can even configure the settings related to this map here. It's all up to you. Now, you can check your site from the front end.
You can see we have two buttons over here, so let's add the respective page links to these buttons. Similarly, you can add the links to the text here as well. In this button, I'm going to add the link to the About page. Here we'll add the Contact Pages link. Once everything is in place, let's update the page. To add the link to the button in the header, all you need to do is move back to WP Dashboard. Here, hover over Appearance and click on Customize. You can see this is the button here in the header. Simply click on it to go to the button Settings. Here on the left, you can edit the button text. I'll simply add the link to the contact page here. Don't forget to publish the changes. Let's view the site from the front end now. You can see how beautiful the website looks now. On clicking this button in the header, you get redirected to this page. So this is how easy it is to edit the pages. After editing the pages, we're going to see how to add a photo gallery plugin. Now that we've edited the pages, I'll now show you how you can add responsive galleries and albums to your website. For this functionality, you need to install a plugin first. To do so, move back to the WordPress dashboard. Hover onto Plugins and click on Add New. In the search bar, search for the photo gallery plugin. This is the plugin we're looking for. Simply click on Install Now to start the installation. Once done, it's now time to activate the plugin. To configure the plugin, simply hover over the photo gallery and click on Add Galleries slash Images. Now, I want to showcase different galleries for weddings and fashion, and then later I'll link that to my service page to these wedding and fashion titles over here. Moving back, let's add a gallery. Click on Add a New Gallery. And here you need to give your gallery a title. You can also set a cover image of your gallery. Now to add images you can import it from the media library or upload them to the media library. So let's add some from the media library. You can add it one by one like this. You can also select multiple images all at once and add them to your gallery. Once done, it'll take a few minutes and the images will be added to the gallery. You can simply remove the individual image title here. Once everything is in place, let's publish the gallery.
Let's move back to galleries and add another gallery that will contain fashion photos. So, simply click on Add a New Gallery and give your gallery a title over here. It's now time to add images to your gallery. Let me select multiple images to be added here. Once done, click on Insert. You can see the images have been added here. Let me simply remove the individual image title. And once done, let's publish the gallery. We've successfully created a wedding and fashion gallery. Let's add one more gallery repeating the process. Let's give this gallery a title. And this time I'll create an advertisement gallery. Let's add images to this gallery as well. Once images are selected, simply click on Insert. I'll now remove the individual titles of the images. You can edit these as per your need. Once done, click on Publish. You can see we've created different galleries here. The plugin comes with various other features and functionalities, which you can explore on your own. Now let's create the pages for each gallery to be embedded on, and then later we'll link these pages to the service page. To do so, hover over Pages and click on Add New. Let me give this page a title. I'm naming it as Wedding Gallery. To add a gallery, we'll use the blocks provided. Simply click on the Add block and its icon. Search for the Photo Gallery and select Photo Gallery block. Here you can select the gallery style. Now it's time to select the gallery to embed in this page. You can even select the theme from here. Once done, click on Insert to post. You can see the photo gallery has been added here. Now let's publish the page. Similarly, let's create the pages for the other two galleries as well. Give this page a title. And by using Photo Gallery Block, let me add the gallery to this page. Select the gallery style and the gallery from this page. Once done, it's now time to publish the page. You can find the page link here, which we'll use later. Creating another page for the advertisement gallery. Adding the page title and using the block, let me add the gallery. Once everything is in place, simply publish the page. Now we will link these pages here to the service page. To do so, edit the page with Elementor.
we're going to add the link to the title. Simply click on it or click on the pen icon, and you can find an option to add a link here. Simply copy the link to the wedding gallery page and paste that link over here like this. Once done, don't forget to update the page. Similarly, I'll link the fashion page here. And now the advertisement page here. Once everything is in place, click on the update button. It's now time to view the page and check the plugin in action. Let me open up each link. And this is how the plugin embeds the gallery to the pages. This is how you can display the photography portfolio and make your website look beautiful. You can display galleries in different styles using the plugin. So now that you've learned how to add a photo gallery, we're going to create a privacy policy page. A privacy policy page is a document required by law that discloses the information you collect about visitors on your website. It's recommended to add a privacy policy page to your website whether you're a photographer, freelancer, or business owner. So, to create one, in your dashboard, go to Settings, then click on Privacy. Here you have two options. You can either create a privacy policy page or use an existing page from here. So let's click on Create to create one. And as you can see, a privacy policy template was loaded. You can edit this page as per your privacy policy, then click on Publish. Now let's add this to our menu. Back in the dashboard, Go to Appearance, then click on Menus. Now here, let's select the menu first. Once selected, search for the Privacy Policy page here. Simply add it to the menu like this. Once added, don't forget to save the menu. Let's add it to the footer menu as well. So, let me select the footer menu from here. And select the privacy policy page here and click on Add to Menu. Once added, don't forget to save the menu. Now I'll just reload the site, and the menu item was added. You can see the privacy policy menu item here in the header. Scrolling down, you can see it in the footer menu as well. When I click on it, I'm redirected to the privacy policy page. This was all about how to add the privacy policy in your photography website. Let's go over some additional useful plugins and WordPress settings. Let's explore WordPress settings now. To do so, move back to the dashboard, hover onto Settings, and click on General. You can see various settings here, like you can edit the site title and edit the tagline. You can enable membership as well from here. You can also set site language, time zone, date format, time format, week starts on, etc. So, everything is self explanatory. Moving next to Writing Settings, you can see various settings here and configure those as you like. We have some reading settings here as well. 
You can select what your home page should display from here. You can set the number of blog pages to display. Moving next to discussion settings, all the settings are self-explanatory and you can explore these settings on your own as per your requirement. You can set the avatar as well from here. Next is media settings. You can set various media related settings, like setting thumbnail size. Next up is permalinks. WordPress allows us to create a custom URL structure, and we can do it here. You can select the permalink structure from here, or create a custom structure from here. I recommend you to do this only once when you're making your website. Now, let me show you some useful plugins that would add additional functionality to your photography website. To do so, let's hover on to Plugins and click on Add New. First, I'll show you an image optimization plugin. We are going to be using the Smoosh plugin. Click Install Now to start the installation. And as you can see, this plugin is a very good rating and is also compatible with our version of WordPress. Once the installation is complete, this button changes to activate. Click on it to activate the plugin. The smoosh icon is now on the dashboard. So click on the dashboard here. And the plugin automatically checks for images that need to be optimized on your site. You can see here we have 39 images that need to be optimized on my site. Once done, simply click on Bulk Smush Now, and the plugin will optimize those images. There are additional settings that you can look into as well, like you can set the image size here. You can enable automatic compression. You can explore other settings as well on your own. Then there's one more thing you can activate, and that is Lazy Load. So click here on Lazy Load under Smush. Lazy Loading is the practice of delaying the load or initialization of resources or objects until they're actually needed to improve performance and save system resources, bandwidth conservation, and make pages load faster. Now, the next plugin I'll show you is the Health Check and Troubleshooting plugin. This plugin performs a number of checks on your WordPress installation to detect common configuration errors and known issues, and also allows plugins and themes to add their own checks. So this is the plugin. Click on Install Now to start the installation. And as you can see, this plugin has a very good rating and is also compatible with our version of WordPress. Once the installation is complete, this button changes to activate. Click on it to activate the plugin. To configure the plugin, hover over Tools and click on Site Health. As you can see, it says the website's health is good. And here you'll see any critical information about your website that needs your attention. And the plugin also has some recommendations for you to improve your site. Next, go to Troubleshooting. And here you can troubleshoot your site if you ever face any issues. You can just click on Enable Troubleshooting Mode and it'll disable all the plugins and themes on your site. And then you can go and enable them one by one until you find the plugin or theme that's causing an error. Now, before we finish, one of the most important steps is to add a cookie bar to the site. Now, we're almost done, and the last thing we need to do is add a cookie bar. Cookies are small files containing data sent by a website to store in the user's browser. Cookies are widely used on the web for storing information and providing a personalized browsing experience to users. So, we'll add a cookie bar on the site to get consent from the users to accept cookies. To do this, we're going to use a plugin. So, go to Plugins, then click on Add New. In the search bar, type cookies and press enter. 
this is the plugin. Click on Install Now to start the installation, and as you can see, this plugin has a very good rating and is also compatible with our version of WordPress. Once the installation is complete, this button changes to activate. Click on it to activate the plugin, and you can configure the plugin from here. Here you can see that server status is active and the law selected is GDPR. You can see the preview over here. Under the Cookie Banner tab, you can select the Consent template and also enable the banner preview. Under Layout Settings, you can select the layout of the banner you want, and then you can see the preview accordingly, like this. Moving on to Content and Colors, under Cookie Notice Settings, you can edit the title and the message. You can even edit the content and background colors from here. On scrolling, you can see various related settings that you can configure. It's all up to you. You can set the color scheme, and you can enable banner previews and check the changes here. Select any options that suit your requirement. You can see various other tabs here which you can configure accordingly. The plugin provides a policy generator as well, where you can generate the privacy policy as well as the cookie generator policy. Once everything is in place, simply click on Publish Changes. Now, let's check the website from the front and see the plugin in action. Let me open up the URL in incognito mode. And when loaded, you can see the cookie banner here. This is how the plugin works. So, that's it. These are all the steps required to make a beautiful photography portfolio in WordPress. If you face any problems or need help, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button. If you're new to our channel, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell icon so you don't miss any of our future videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.